So, AI agents. Of course, you're hearing this everywhere, we're talking about it, everyone's talking about it. But when you actually look into building AI agents, let's say on here on YouTube, what do you find? The easiest way to build AI agents by deploying it with cursor or actually coding it in Python. But I promise it's really, really easy. Let's be honest. Most of us here probably don't know how to code or are just looking for an easier way to build AI agents. And that is where Integral's AI Studio stands alone amongst all of the different competitors. You've probably heard of definitions of Agentech AI at this point and somewhat understand it as, you know, basically connecting an LLM to actions where it can do something for you. But you want to see what it actually looks like and you want to actually try it yourself in an easy and fun way, right? I've been having so many conversations lately about Agentech AI and people are having these grand ideas for businesses or how to help their clients if they're a consultant or just, you know, want to build their own agents for their own social media or fitness or whatever. And honestly, the best way that I can always tell people about Agentech AI is rather than just telling you some definition that a book is saying here or Anthropic or OpenAI are saying there, is to actually show you and take you into our platform so that you can visualize what an AI agent is and that's where you really start making up all your ideas of how you can build this and how you can use it in your everyday life or your business. So grab your metaphorical paper and pen and let's jump into AI Studio. All you have to do to start building AI agents the true easiest way is head to integral.ai. And here's our homepage where all you have to do is press on try AI Studio or try free in the top right hand corner. After you've signed up for a free account, you see our homepage here, which has some of our sample agents, as well as all of the different agents that I've built. But let's start from scratch. Go ahead and create new. Notice when I come to this page, it is basically a blank canvas, which when you think about AI agents or even most workflows, we often have the blank canvas conundrum, which is what do I do from here? We have our agent inputs, our LLM node in the middle, and our agent outputs. Think of this as the most rudimentary and easiest version of ChatGPT. Whereas you have the ability to change around the model, like for example, you know, GPT-40 Mini, GPT-40, Gemini 2.0, DeepSeq R1, and we're constantly adding new models because they're constantly coming out. But for the most part, I actually like to use Gemini 2.0 because it has some of the highest benchmarks for the most amount of activities. But in this case, you see that you have the ability to actually create and kind of craft together exactly what you want this LLM to do. You have your user prompt, which is exactly what every chat interface does, is exactly what you're asking for. You just put in whatever you want. But here is where the true power comes in. Most of the time when you're interacting with these chatbots on, let's say, Claude's website or OpenAI's website or most chat interfaces, there is a system prompt underneath that is actually dictating everything that is being answered that you do not have the ability to see and you don't have the ability to actually change or edit based off of what you're looking for. Every time you interact with ChatGPT maybe, you have to tell it, act like a personal assistant, act like a tutor every single time. Whereas in this case, you have the ability to put it on your system prompt and it will remember it for the whole entire context. And then we have things like chat history and temperature, whereas chat history, it can basically be how long do you want this conversation to be able to go. With the temperature, you have the ability to kind of dictate how creative you want it to go. Zero being it's not creative at all, it's just going to basically give you exactly what you've asked for in the output, all the way up to one and especially two, where it gets so creative closer to two and onwards from one that it starts to speak gibberish but you get to choose that. You're in control of what you want this LLM to do. So you have a lot of power in and of itself with just one node, this one LLM node. Now on the top left-hand corner, you can notice this addition sign, add node. You can see all of the different nodes that we have here, you know, PDF to images, basically the image to text capabilities. You have vector memory. You can add in more LLMs. Like what I was doing earlier was basically making a coding agent that had a different LLM for every step of writing that code. And it was asked to then debug the code before it. So it's constantly iterating off of itself to create the best code. Kind of like what you've been seeing everyone talk about with vibe coding and cursor is that it does all this on the back end of it, but you have control of how many times you want to iterate, what do you want it to do. But then we have things like text to image, image to text, all kinds of image to image nodes, 
text to speech, you can start to see and craft in your head, oh man, I've had this idea for so many years that I want to build X, Y, and Z, but I only have it kind of in a traditional workflow type paper on a Google Doc or a Microsoft Doc. Now you can actually start to build those by, oh, here is that, you know, I wanted it to be able to search Google at the same time as use text to speech because I wanted to become almost like a podcast, maybe like Notebook LM a little bit. Or I want to add in, you know, text to image as well. And you just start adding these onto the canvas and putting them exactly where you want them to basically make a workflow. Okay, it's going to start here with Gemini to talk about whatever I want. Then it's also going to be able to connect to text to speech so I can have an MP3. Oh, but I also want it to connect to this image generation node, which you can change all the different models that you'd like. And once you start to actually visualize and see the possibilities of what can be built, and this is of course not even a real agent, I could then start to all, you know, put all these together and create a very sophisticated agent and kind of what I was playing around with in less than one minute. And then from there, that's the big thing with AI agents. And like most things in life, you try it, maybe it fails, you learn from it, and you iterate. And this is what you can do every single time on AI Studio. You just save it. I might be able to call, I can call it maybe just like test agent. And then when you're sleeping tonight or you're just sitting down watching TV thinking, oh man, that'd be a really cool thing to build. You can come back to this agent and just continuously iterate off of it until it's something that it's an extremely complex agent. Like, for example, something like this that we use kind of internally to make specialized images for people at conferences. You can see how complex and there's so many different agents they can connect to. And you can truly start to build something unique to your actual use case. So what I would encourage you to do is take this framework of what I have shown you right here. Find out the things that you find maybe a little bit boring as part of your life or as part of your job that is just a repetitive task over and over again. Like for YouTube, for example, if you've ever tried making a YouTube video or an Instagram reel, LinkedIn post, whatever, is you start to realize, oh my gosh, for every single post, I have to have a thumbnail, I have to have a script, I have to have a post to go along with it. Kind of like what I've talked about in my social media agent that I've built on this channel. That kind of thing is easily, easily repeatable and it can be made into a super simple agent, which I actually showed you how to build. So as you're starting to think about how can I start actually building AI agents for my business, for myself personally, it is of course best to think of it a way of visualizing what can actually be built. And let's be honest, this is the easiest way that I have possibly found how to build AI agents where I can just continuously learn and continuously build off of them rather than having to do something super complex in cursor or your own IDE or just in general with Python or coding. And that is the true power of Integral's AI Studio. So I hope that kind of opens up the idea of how you can start building AI agents. And if you're interested, just head over to integral.ai, try it out for yourself. And what I'm really interested in is comment below, what are some of the ideas of agents that you have that you've never been able to build before but now with Integral's AI Studio, or even just this YouTube channel and you being able to interact with me, what would you want to build as an AI agent? And of course, make sure that you're following us on our social medias. Specifically, LinkedIn is kind of where we live most of our time, but we also do have a Discord channel that allows you to literally talk to me and talk to other people on the team to start iterating these ideas off of and kind of answer questions in real time. So make sure to check the comments below where I'll put those links down there so that you can have a helping hand when you're actually building these AI agents. So until next time, thanks for watching.